Lounging Sun. Uh, welcome back to the Comic Con. My name is Ryan, and with me today I have writer Jeremy Adams, who, I, well, as of the day of this recording, uh, the Flash drops. So you're the new writer on Flash. You wrote yeah. some Future State stuff that I really dug, but you're kind of new to comics. So first of all, welcome. And yes. I would love to hear a little bit more about how you got into comics as a fan and then bring me into how you, you jumped into the writing side in comics. Sure. Uh, you know, I am new to comics only in terms of writing. Right. Uh, you know, uh, as, as a fan, so the story goes that, um, you know, my dad drew some comics in the 70s, not very many, and, and some in the 80s. So he, he drew a little bit on this DC comic called Ghosts with this character oh, named wow. Dr. 13 and Spectre. And so I remember my earliest memories is of comic stuff and ink boards and, and stuff. And then he also drew a bunch of Captain Adam in the 80s. And so anyways, I was steeped in comic books. That was my... That was my go-to anything of choice. And my parents got divorced very early. And I could, probably my my love for comics grew further because I was trying to connect with my dad. Like, there's all those psychological things, right? So I collected comics. Um, I grew up in a small town. We didn't have a comic book store. It was always like antique stores. And you'd go in and, you know, you'd rifle through what they had. And that's kind of how I first started really i mean i had comics previously and then my dad would give me comics my mom would give me comics on trips but then it was like i remember one of my first comics i bought on my own was a ditko blue beetle you know a comic and uh i was really into mark grunwald stuff uh from marvel like captain america um and you know my first comic i remember getting though was my dad got me a detective comics with killer croc but he was like he was like a real assassin and jason todd had blonde hair no he had like red hair mm -hmm. and it was and i remember being totally creeped out by it because it was it was really it was really dark but i obviously i've been all the stuff i was bullied for growing up is now the stuff that pays the bills and it's <laughs> and it's like such a weird transition to be a nerd of a certain age and then be like everybody loves this stuff that is not how it was <laughs> you know so um yeah so as far as writing comics i mean obviously i started writing animation and then moved on to live action. And um, what had happened was when Dan Didio was there at DC, he wanted to bring in a bunch of uh, like animation writers because Warner Brothers Animation has a, a really great reputation for uh, doing DC oriented movies and uh, shows. And so he, I guess he called or something. I, I don't know the exact, what exactly happened all i know is i got a call it was like hey do you want to come over to dc comics and see about writing a comic book and i'm like ah oh, get out of the way like kicking people <laughs> off and so we met in a room and it was originally going to be this thing called 5g and then right. obviously all these layoffs happened and i thought i was that close i was so close and i don't know if it was tim or it might have been tim but the editor i was doing I was supposed to still be doing a Black Racer backup issue in Superman uh, World, uh, World at War, or whatever that was, um, for Jamie Rich. But uh, what had happened was Tim Sheridan, who's one of my good friends, I think Mike Cotton, the editor that I work with now, said, hey, I've got this list of some writers. What do you think about them? And, and you know, Tim was, I pay him a lot. So, you know, he, he was uh, willing to uh, vouch for me. And so they wanted to put me on uh, Black Adam Future State, which I had a lot of fun. And, you know, one of the joys of this is like being able to create, like I created uh, Gold Beetle and it's like being able to make characters and throw them back in the toy box is like the greatest thing in the world. And of course I have tons of other characters I want to create, but, um, I, you know, Cotton, I think, is just like, okay, slow down, just relax, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 here's, here's this, this is what I want to do next, and, this, and he's like, ah, oh, I think I'm freaking him out a little bit, so, so anyways, I, so I started doing that with uh, Black Adam, really, and then the Black Racer, and then Cotton asked me if I had any ideas for um, Flash, and I was like, and here you go, here's a thousand, and he was like, oh my gosh, great, so how about you start writing the Flash, and I was like, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> you know i'm like did you just no right what well, like for an issue and he's like or until people don't buy i'm like 
well, I'm in for that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everything can change on a dime. Tomorrow they could be like, you know, uh, we don't like prehistoric Wally or whatever, and they get rid of me. But I start writing, and again, I'm new to it, you know, the format, and I'm I'm learning, um, and I fight with Cotton all the time <laughs> about what I can and can't do, and and what you know what they'll let me do because there's so many characters have other arcs and are being used in different other comic books. So I want to be like, oh, I want to use this. And they're like, no, you're not allowed. I'm like, oh, you know, it's a, it's a lot of that. Yeah, so it's, it's I feel like a lot of a lot of writers tell me that, you know. Yeah. I mean, speaking Flash, Joshua Williamson, who wrote, I, I mean, one of my favorite Flash runs of all time. It was amazing. You know, he told me, like, there was characters he wanted to use that he couldn't get to use. Yeah. For those being Wally wasn't allowed in the book as much as he would have liked, right? Right. Um, but I do want to say that, Fla well, first of all, Flash is my was my first comic. Wally oh, really? West, Wally West is my favorite character in comics. Flash 82 by Mark Wade and Mike Wieringa was my first comic book. Wow. So I, I'm very skeptical and very, like, protective of the Flash <laughs> world of characters. And when I found out Wally was going to be somewhat of the lead of the book i'm like oh my god please don't kill him fuck, don't let them fuck this up <laughs> because i did not like what was done with him in heroes in crisis <laughs> i and i'm just gonna say that don't, i don't think the writing was bad i just don't like what was done with him as a character that that's uh -huh. number one number two um flash forward i do not i i didn't enjoy it all i just it was not the wally that i was expecting but I found out you were writing Flash. Yeah. I read your Black Adam. You brought the 853rd Century Justice <laughs> Legion in there. And I'm like, okay, this guy loves DC. Because who the fuck else would bring in that weird concept that we don't see in and we don't see it anymore? So yeah. I read that and I'm like, I have high hopes. I feel like Flash is gonna be done justice. Yeah. I read the first issue. That's why we kept pushing off. We I kept pushing off the interview with you for like the past three weeks because I so is, them, is this where you attack me for being terrible? Because we'll I'm ready. We'll, I'm ready. We'll see. I'm Hold on. We'll see. We'll see if I'm going to attack you yet. But <laughs> I made the mistake with Jeffrey Thorne of talking to him before Green Lantern, so I couldn't right. really ask him as much as right. I would have liked to. Right. You did a great job. Ah, I, I, I am excited to see where it goes from yeah. here. Obviously, like, we're kind of thrust into this, like, moment with Barry and Wally and Wally's... Yeah which I think is interesting, right? Because Wally, to me, never should have been relegated to the background. I right. think that... And, and Barry fans will probably be mad at this. I, I don't hate Barry, but I think he was better dead. Um, <laughs> in terms of... In ter well, and just in terms of, like, what he meant. Sure. The DCU, right? right. Like, and, and Barry, what we got, like, even in Williamson's run, like... He made Barry. He made me care about Barry. I could give right. two shits about Barry as a character before that because Wally was my Flash. Wally right. grew from the sidekick. He was his own man, and yeah. we got to see this progression of a character. And then you just threw it away, right? So I like that you're writing Wally as the main Flash now. Yeah, I think that um, it's clear that you know who Wally is from from from. In my opinion, I want to hear your opinion though on. I mean, you, obviously, like, you had all these ideas for Flash. So I want to hear, like, how that that initial time when, when, when Mike Cotton was like, do you want to do it? Yeah. Why was it a book that you had so many ideas for? And, like, who, what does Wally mean to you as a so, fan, as a writer? Wally, for me, obviously, the Flash book where Wally took over was big. And it wasn't, it wasn't so much that, uh, which I liked. And it's, it's an incredible run. Uh, but there was something about like what you just said about somebody that was a sidekick that kind of took over the mantle and then became one of like, he's hanging out with the people that he probably looked up to as an, as a quote unquote, an equal, you know, like, which has got to be weird and something I would love to explore the idea that like, I have mentors in my own life and as much as I maybe accomplish, they're still 
you know, maybe treat me as a mentor sometimes, you know? Um, and I think what that's one of the cool things about Wally. I also think so many writers have done some incredible stuff in terms of like, he's got kids, he's got a wife. He's, he's wholly unique in so much of that. Like there's so much of a responsibility of like real life responsibility. And, you know, as I'm a husband and I have kids, um, and I'm really, really silly. And I love the fact that like, from the beginning, it seems like Wally has always really enjoyed being a superhero. That's like his, you know, I love the flash and suddenly I'm a speedster. And now I'm, it's like, it's like, he's the ultimate fanboy that keeps living out that dream. So he kind of has this Peter Parker quality to me where even in the most dire circumstances, I feel like he's going to crack a joke or he's going to say something like I could totally see him saying something totally inappropriate and Batman being like, dude, we're like in the middle of, you know, whatever, because I love, I love that he's, he kind of, to me is like keeps hope alive and is keeping things, you know, fun. And, and so one of the things, uh, I think the Justice League Unlimited TV series did a great job of showing who Wally was, you know, this really fun character, but critical character. So when they asked me to do it, there's a couple things. It's like, A, I like quippy, fun, silly stuff. And the thing about The Flash that I think is when I really gravitate toward it is this kind of Doctor Who element. You have a character that can literally go anywhere in time and space in a way. And, and, and really, depending on who's writing him, his powers can be, uh, you know, he could be potentially the most powerful character in the universe. I don't think people explore him that much, but listen, if force equals mass times acceleration, this guy can move at the speed of light. You know what I mean? He's, yeah. he's potentially just unreal powerful. So all those things, I was like, Hey, I want to do some really crazy stuff. I want to do this. Let's do this to start out with. I would love to go do this and this. And, um, of course, that's. I think that's some of the push and pull I have with my editors. Like, no, I want, I want him to be in Central City. I'm like, yeah, for a day. But then, you know, like, I want him to do this, and uh, you know, I because I think also as a fan of comics, uh, you know, they're letting me play in the sandbox now, and and it, like all fans of comics, you've thought about ideas and things you would love to do. And so now somebody's saying, hey, you can do it. And I'm so cynical. I'm like, this is a limited time thing. I got to just get all the dreams out <laughs> you know, right now. But with Wally, I, I, you know, I had, there was a period of time where there was a gap uh, just because of cost where I, I didn't know and, uh, what was going on. And I knew Bill, Barry was coming back and I had read some of the Barry stuff and I still like some of the fun and uh adventurous uh, adventurousness of wally like he's not a trained csi guy but he still right. knows knows how to handle himself and he still has to figure out things and he's a little more empathetic you know and so so yeah so so they were like hey uh the directive was like uh you know we you kind of want to bring wally back i said because you know barry's uh and this is no spoiler but like right you know, Barry's going to go do this omniverse thing. And, um, and so, yeah, I was like, okay, great. This is what I'd want to do. Uh, this is the story I want to tell. And, uh, you know, it's, it's moved and, and whatever, but I, I'm telling a story. And then it, within that story, I think there's another story. And then I would like to lead to a greater story. <laughs> so I, I've got a lot of stuff planned, you know, but again, people don't buy it i'm gone <laughs> you know and and i'm hoping they do i hope they understand when they see it that i'm 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 not going to be the guy who writes i mean i'll do it and you can see it with ollie the the conversation between ollie barry and wally you know i wanted to explore some of that tension that i felt like maybe hadn't been explored yeah because you know roy had died and i know that Heroes in Crisis is a hot button for everybody. And, um, you know, the directive from above is like, it happened. So for me as a writer on Wally, I needed to, uh, I needed to, hmm, how do I say this without spoiling anything? I needed to explore that for myself so that I can step forward with Wally. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a great scene. I mean, right. I. You know, I didn't even realize that we didn't get that moment until right. I was reading it. And 
you got Ollie's voice down. I like I I love Green Arrow is my second favorite character. Right. Actually, it's it's Ollie, uh, Wally, and uh, Dick Grayson. Those are oh, those awesome. are my three. You know, I think Dick Grayson. I like him more than I like Batman. Oh man! So you were happy when Batman died? You're like later, buddy. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't say necessarily that I was happy when he died. But I do wish we got more time with Dick Grayson as Batman. I think oh, he was so was good at Batman. Batman. Well, I was one of those, I loved him as Batman and Damien yeah. as uh, the sidekick. I was I was the angry fan. How dare you? And then suddenly I'm reading him like, this is really good. <laughs> yeah, because you literally flipped. Yeah. You flipped the dynamic. Yeah. And it was yeah. so interesting. And I yeah. think it was uh, some of my favorite Batman comics. But, you know, getting all these frustration out you know about Roy, even though like, and again, this shouldn't be a spoiler. Roy's back, right, in the Infinite Frontier, right. but for one reason or another, he hasn't made his um, he hasn't made his presence known to right. anybody. He hasn't told anybody he's back for whatever reason, and I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah, me but, too. I have no idea, by the way. I like I didn't even know that happened when I wrote this. That's good though that you didn't know because it plays as like, no, Roy's dead. He's yeah. not around. So yeah. I think it helped the scene. I think that. uh you know, much like what Tim Sheridan has done with Teen Titans, it's like it's clear that you have a love for the characters, but it doesn't feel like, oh, this is just a fan right. doing what a fan yeah. wants to do. <laughs> and I'm I'm telling you, man, I I after I I read the issue last night, I closed it and I smiled. I'm like <laughs> I was like, they're finally not shitting all over Wally West anymore. <laughs> you know? Well so, Tim and I were talking about that. We were and, and basically I, I I said, like, as long as I'm writing him, he's going to be fine. And Tim's like, well, you should make that, you should tell everybody that, it, like, you know, the, the implicit threat is if you don't buy this, then whoever comes next, you don't know. It's like that scene in Con Air where they have a gun toward a bunny rabbit. It's like, well, you better buy this thing because you don't know what's going to happen next. Uh, but I care. I, I literally am finding myself, um, because, I've, because I've had a lot of characters, uh, uh, you know, because I'm a Ted Cord fan, and Max Cord yeah, blew his brain out, and I remember being like, "What?" <laughs> you know, and I was so, and I was like, "I'm not gonna read any Jaime Reyes." It was all like Ted Cord, you know. And then I was like, "Oh, he's pretty cool too." And I was like, "You know, this is a world that's big enough for a bunch of Blue Beetles or whatever." But I was, um, uh, you know, as a fan, you just get invested in these characters, and yeah. I'm, in, I'm invested in Wally, and I'm kind of like. Don't hurt him anymore. <laughs> you know? yeah, that doesn't yeah. mean there's not going to be drama, and you know there's not going to be threats and stuff. It's just, yeah, I, I, I just, I, I get, I get everything everybody did, and I think the writers that have gone before me, they're just telling stories and they're telling the best stories they can, and I, and I like some and I don't like some, but having been on the other side of it, and I, I found this out the first time when I started writing animation. And then live action, what you find out on the other side of it is it's a miracle that anything gets made. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it's like it all these are very collaborative art forms that are informed by artists and letterers and editors, and then like corporate level decision making that's like we and you've seen it, you know, it's like uh I'll give you an example. I did a I did a bunch of Lego DC superhero movies. Right. And at the time, I did a Lego Flash movie, and then uh, it was a Lego Aquaman movie, another Lego Batman. This is like its own unique universe outside of the Lego Batman. Uh, and then a Lego Shazam. Well, originally, those were all supposed to come out, coincide with the release of the big live-action movies. And oh, then okay. uh, the, the live-action Flash didn't get made, but we still put out you know, our Flash and then Aquaman. I think our Aquaman Lego came out somewhat near the same time. So it was supposed to come out near the same time so that kids had a touchstone for those characters too. Um, so, so again, that's like a corporate synergy that kind of trickles down. And because these aren't my toys, you know, I'm in somebody else's toy box and I want to keep staying. I want to keep playing. And I want to keep hopefully entertaining people and, and, and that they'll give me more opportunities to do other characters and other things. Um, but that means, that means I don't, I don't want to leave flash. I just started, you know what I mean? Yeah. But again, it's not up to me. I hope 
I hope, but if people buy a ton, then maybe it'll be up to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe I'll be I mean, like, ah, you're not going to t throw me to the wolves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's why I want to talk to you. I want to help promote the book. I'm definitely going to be talking about it at the shop when I get there today. Thank, um, you. Thank you. You know, I, you have the couple things that I really, that I, one that I found interesting and yeah. I'm curious to see how it'll play out, which is him not, him wanting to retire. Yeah. He finally got his family back. Right. You know, after he came back in rebirth, after all the shit from Heroes in Crisis, Flash right. Forward, all that shit, he, he's now got his family. He doesn't want to be Flash, even though Barry right. asked him to, to be the successor. So I'm interested in that, and I want to know where you're planning going with that. But also, I really, really love that you, once again, hit home, that he's got the deepest connection to the Speed Force, mm -hmm. and he understands it better than anyone, mm -hmm. which is why, in this issue spoiler alert um <laughs> is that uh is that he's now being thrust through time right and is essentially going to fix what's maybe wrong with the speed force mm -hmm. and that in and of itself was cool because i mean the last page i was like yeah. yes i was like yes <laughs> dude it was, it was just it was such a flash story but it's, <laughs> that's what i've been missing that's what right. i have been upset that i haven't had for the past few months so right um well i i, I appreciate that i i want to have fun you know, I, I, there are some writers and comics I go to for drama and, and stuff, and there will be drama, but my thing is adventure. You know, like I am the total op, I'm, I, I'm basically a Sith Lord, right? Like if the Jedi is adventure and excitement, you know, Jedi craves not these things. I'm like, I crave those things. I crave adventure and excitement. That's what I want to do. That's what I open a book, you know, even as a kid, it's like, oh this is awesome we're going to a new world we're gonna there's a speed dinosaur like i think the more wacky and fun and silly with the implicit threat behind and the fact that matt that flash has this like massive mythology and a massive story and it makes it a little weirder too because the omniverse is this kind of thing like continuity is you know like everything happened like it's you know it's a very weird a uh, uh, thing that we can pull from, so uh, I'm 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 kind of exploring that, and and like you said, as far as Wally, you know, as a dad, and I'm thinking there was a great moment in Williamson's run where uh, he he sees Jay and Ira, and it's just like, oh my gosh, he has his kids back, and I'm 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 pathetic. I will tell you, before my kids, I was a soulless automaton, nothing. Could affect, <laughs> nothing could affect me emotionally now it's just like a blow of the wind and i've got tears in my eyes but i remember reading that scene and i'm just like oh gosh i'm a mess and you know so the idea that this dad is back with his kids and now you know his wife and he's got this family he's got this this uh you know this unit back and he knows how dangerous everything else is and i i can only liken it to like you know a firefighter or a policeman that goes through something really traumatic and then it's like oh you know what's the most important thing to me it's it's actually not being the flash it's actually my family yeah. and, and and putting all that math in his head and also i think he has and you see it with the ollie conversation there's this residual guilt of like you know, uh, yeah, I have to do this for me and I have to do this for everybody because I might, I, I might lose control or whatever, whatever that is. And right. so those are all things that as a re as a, as a fan and a reader, um, I need to work out for the character for me to write him the way that I hope I can write him. And so that's what this journey is about. This journey is about like, who is Wally now? What does that mean? I mean, I think Wally is hopeful and I think he is fun. And I think the flash is a fun, the flat as far back as the flash has existed. Some of those books are so wacky mm -hmm. and so off the wall. And I am here for it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I want it to be wacky and weird. And so, um, you know, I'm excited for the next issue. Everybody sees, uh, you know, spoiler alert, but the ending with, uh, the return of gold beetle and what that has in store and we're going to we're going to we're going to play this out for a, a few issues and um and then you know i think there're going to be some real uh, you know like dramatic moments a little later on i think 
you know, Barry or Barry and Ollie are going to have some some moments to to really kind of figure out their feelings a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it really is about showing that Wally Wally isn't Kid Flash. Wally is the Flash in my mind. And so, you know, that's that's just that's just it. It's not it's not even necessarily a baton to be passed as much as it, you know, it, he's the flash, you know? So we'll see. I mean, and that's the cool thing. I mean, there's Barry fans, but Barry fans don't need to worry. Barry's got like an omniverse to explore. You know what I mean? So right. it's like, that's all good. You got, you're going to have Barry stories for, you know, ever. And, uh, uh, so I'm excited for that too. Um, and, my hope is that, pe like you said, my hope is that people read it and they just come away smiling and going, man, that was fun. That was great. And, yeah. uh, and, and that's, that's my hope because, you know, three ninety nine, four ninety nine, whatever it is, it's like, that's a lot of money. So I, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get people to, uh, to enjoy what I do and I'm still learning. I mean, I'll be as honest as possible. Uh, you know, this amazing art and ink and color covers a multitude of sins, <laughs> you know? So, so it's, I, I'm grateful for people like that. I'm grateful for my editor that's, you know, yelling at me because he thinks my splash pages are too boring. I'm like, no, it's fine. You know? <laughs> so, so whatever yeah. that alchemy is, I'm hoping that it continues to go. People have been very lovely. Um, and generally, uh, uh, that's great. You know, but fandom can go sideways too. So, I find myself sometimes I can right, go, right. I can go sideways. You know what I mean? Like I try, I, I try not to like overly bash something if I don't like right. it. Um, I mean, I will be very yeah. vocal when I feel like a character is written out of sure. character or um, based on like the history of them, or if I really dislike something. Like I said at the top of the episode, like I flash forward, I right. I won't ever read right. it again. I read it because it had right. Wally. I will never crack that book right. open. Um, Heroes in Crisis, it's hard because Clay Man's art is phenomenal. Right. Mitch Gerard's on there too. Tom King's writing. It is a phenomenal right. project. It's just take take Wally out and put somebody else <laughs> as, the, as the person that's responsible and I have a different experience. Um, but, you know, you said like the, you know, it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, comic books go up, it seems like every year, yeah. the price points is higher. Yeah. Flash was four ninety nine. At first, I'm like, "Why? Yeah. Why is this more?" But thirty eight pages of content. I don't mind backup stories, but I'd rather have a bigger. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, you know yeah. what I mean? One story. So, are we going to continue to get that? Was it just no, it'll be thirty eight, and then it'll be twenty two, and then, um, okay. and then. I mean, what what's exciting to me though is I have some like really wonky ideas going forward <laughs> that I'm, yeah. I'm super excited to see yeah, I'm uh, here for it. you know so i i'm and i'm and again i'm trying to pull there's some people i'm just like trying to pull along like come with me into my madness <laughs> let's do this just weird thing and see see if people are okay with it because i also think you know it's my opportunity to explore a new medium and um i'm having fun uh you know it's a lot it's a lot of work that was one of those things that i don't think I was, I was prepared for. And I don't know if it's because I love, I love it so much and it's been such a part of my life. And now it's like, oh, this is a bucket list thing and I get to do it. But, um, you know, when I do animation or live action, uh, it's its own skill set. And so learning this new skill set and, and realizing how much work it is, um, and it's a lot. And, uh, it makes me have a lot more admiration for, you know, the people that work in the medium, honestly, uh, they should be paid more. And, uh, yeah. and, I, and, you know, I, I really hope, I just wish there was a way, you know, when I was a kid, it was so easy to get a comic book, you know, that's, that to me is always one of those things where I was like, oh man, the only way we write, we lower this price is to get more people to buy them, you know? And, yeah. uh, and when I was a kid, it was a spinner rack in every store, you yeah, know, everywhere. Mom, yeah. And my mom would either leave me there while she went shopping, you know, and, or she would buy me one to shut me up. And it was just so easy to get a comic um, so that you could read it. And and this is the other thing about this story. I made it so that you can be a young kid and read it and you're not going to get in trouble. I mean, sure, a big 
part of the planet explodes from speed force you know but 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 you know what yeah. i mean it's yeah, not no. gonna, it's not gonna be so gruesome it's not gonna be you know you're not gonna you know like when i was a kid it was always like i'd read a movie and it was like always if there was a topless scene or something that's the moment my mom would walk in the door and i'd be like yeah. I swear to you, like I'd be like, uh, I swear this is a movie about a karate ninja that, does, you know, and she's just, -da -da, you know, whatever. Like, this is something that's supposed to be fun and that, you know, you know, if you're a parent, you can read it with your kid and it's, gonna, it's still going to be fun. There's going to be some deep cuts and stuff that um, you may not understand just because of the depth of what's gone on with The Flash. But I also hope people, it'll drive people to go to like, you know, DC, what is it? DC Infinite and like look up some past runs and read what other people have done because I've, I've really done a deep dive and it's it's hard because there's different continuities and it's like, what what am I allowed to do? What am I not allowed to do? Uh, is that still apply or does that not apply, you know? Right. Uh, and so it's it's trying to keep that all straight. But I'm having fun, man. I really am. And and I'm, I'm a few books in. I'm hoping <laughs> I'm hoping they let me keep doing it. I mean, yeah, if it's anything like the first issue, I, I also hope you keep uh, <laughs> doing it. Um, well, it's going it's to be silly. I mean, there's going to be silly moments. And then, like I said, there's going to be serious moments. I'm building up to something that I think is going to be, uh, you know, more, probably more on the dramatic side, maybe. But, like, I want a lot of fun. And, and that's what I think about Wally. I think he's going to have fun no matter what. If he was fighting dark side, I think he'd be able to find a joke somewhere. You know, so. Yeah. That's, that's, that's kind of how I'm looking at it. Okay, uh, I just want to ask. I mean, you're doing time travel, so my mind obviously goes. I mean, I've been reading Flash for for, yeah, for, for my entire fandom. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? So, I mean, I started when I was five or six, and right. I'm 34. I haven't yeah. stopped. There has never <laughs> been a break in my in my comic book reading. So, I know the Flash universe very well, yeah. and I'm assuming you might pull some certain characters based on being able to travel, jumping through time, but. What runs have you been? Because I I know you don't want to spoil anything, so I will figure it out myself. What runs have been really? Um, I don't want to say influential. That's not the right word. What have you been drawing from? What have you been going back and reading? Yeah, to pull from in terms mm -hmm. of where do you want to go? That is tough. Because I again I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, you know the Wade stuff, Williamson stuff. Uh, there are characters that I've been exploring um, to a degree. There are little hints like Cotton for not the next issue, but the issue after that. Cotton had come to me like, hey, here's this paragraph in this book that has ne never, never been explored. I'm like, great, let's let's do that. And and so there are certain little uh, 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 tidbits. It's also not about like, I don't want to be too heavy handed in exploring something that's been explored. That's not as interesting to me as coming up or trying to do something new to me. But I will explore characters more and I'll be like, oh, OK, uh, there's Jay. I want to I kind of want to read more more stories of Jay just to get the flavor of and, and capture that in my head. And um, the same with Bart. And, you know, again, like like Bart's had a couple different origins and it's like, well, what's what is his origin and, and what can we use? Um, and so it's about but I but I'm pretty familiar with Bart because I was I, I loved the Young Justice series when it was out uh the the comic Same. series yeah. and Impulse both of yeah. them I have yeah. the complete runs of yeah, both yeah 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 and so a lot of those characters so the question for me is here we have Wally jumping into different bodies at the moment in different time frames how how can I do that long enough for people not to be like okay we get it you know, all right, we get it. This is boring. Let's move on. And so that's kind of the thing. And I'm hoping that people will stick with me long enough to see the culmination of it so that we can move on to other things. Uh, because I, I have kind of like uh, three arcs that I'd like to do. Um, and I'm hoping that I can do them. Uh, so, so as far as the runs, you know, I, again, it's just about getting the flavor of the character wade's run was obviously hugely influential i love i i i hear people bag on it but i i like jeff johns and uh i i like some of his stuff and you know flashpoint amazing 
Yeah, Flashpoint was, I think, really a, a swing for the fences. And yeah. um, again, it's something, it's playing with that little kernel of an idea of, here's a guy who can go back in time. And so it, what if he did this one thing? The butterfly effect of that is really interesting to me. So I think there's those timey-wimey things. It was very serious. It's much more serious than what I'll do. Cause I just want to be silly. I would love, I would love <laughs> every, my issues are just going to be lunatic and, uh, fun and exciting. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a bronze age guy. So it's like a, a lot of where I'm coming from. You, I, you can see it in the black out of future state. It's like, it's, there's very much a throwback feel of like, look at all these captions. And, uh, with that, I mean, that was like, Again, that was like, this is my one chance to do a comic. Here's everything. <laughs> you know, so uh, uh, I'm hoping, I'm also hoping I can get better at just how much is on a panel, how many panels, like trying to figure out that and, and, and really coordinate with the artists. Um, I, I've got to, I've been able to work with some incredible artists and there is something hugely gratifying. It's almost like when actors say, you know, they go and like, you do a movie and you don't see it. You're, you're doing like little bits and it's not really gratifying inter until audience sees it. That's what it is like writing animation too. It's like you write something and then two years later you get to see it. But there's something about the immediacy of comic books where you're like, hey, I wrote this thing and like within a month or two, so, you know, w very earlier than that, you start seeing artwork. And the next thing you know, it's like people are putting words and colors and you're just like, this feels so good. This is happening so quick. Um, so I don't, I don't ever want to take it for granted either. And uh, I, don't, I never want to step on anybody else's toes. I, I'm the new kid on the block. So I'm at the bottom of the pecking order. I just want to make good stories that people enjoy, honestly, that people have fun and a smile and they are like, that was funny. That was crazy. That was exciting. And I, and I, I tend to get overzealous. So it's like, I, you know, I'll be, my editor will be like, there are too many panels. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, but I need them. I need them, you know, <laughs> because you only give me 22 pages, you know, <laughs> he's just yeah. like, no one's going to want to watch this action scene for this many pages. I'm like, no, John Wick is three movies. That's all it is as a giant action. People are going to love it. <laughs> you know, so, so I'm obviously really enthusiastic. And, and, and that's, I try to keep that joy into the writing when I find that groove. And uh, yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I'm just hoping people enjoy it. Uh, something I picked out, you said a paragraph that was never touched upon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, if you're saying a paragraph, so my mind goes to the life story of mm. the Flash. I'm not telling you anything. <laughs> In fact, okay. I'm, I'm starting to adopt. Sorry, I'm going to adopt that Stephen Moffat, who was one of the producers on Doctor Who, and he would say he he said um, I think he I forget what interview, but he said he's just going to start lying about everything so that no one can actually pin him down on what is true, and he'll never get in trouble for being a spoiler. So I'm just gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, Barry Allen's going to uh, turn into a monster. Like I'm just gonna start lying my my butt off so that people don't know what's what. Okay. When the issue comes out, I'll um, I'll I'll get the paragraph and I'll tweet it out. I think if I'm allowed. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking analyze the shit out of that book <laughs> later and see if I can pinpoint the thing that has not well, been touched upon because I, I feel like I know Flash really well and I have read that book twice. I think I think while. you're I think you're overanalyzing this particular paragraph because my thing was like you know I well I can't explain it. But anyways you'll see. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Please yeah. just tweet it out so that maybe yeah. I'll get it, maybe I won't. Is there anything that you can kind of tease or, or talk about that that's that we can expect coming up in the flash um more quantum leapy stuff uh uh a lot of fun mm, i mean i, I I'm, I'm terrified of saying something i can't say you know um i i'm i'm down the road with wally right now like i i'm i'm, okay. I'm past this little uh arc already or what issue are you on right now? I mean, that's not, that's not, that's not like ruining anything. It's, I'm just asking you what issue. Uh, 
Oh man, oh man. I don't know. I don't know. Like I'm scared. I'm listen, that's the thing in animation, like you can't say anything, you know? I'm trying to uh but that's the thing. Like I'll be like if they let me, I would be at eight hundred tomorrow. <laughs> so, right, you know, okay. so I, I'm trying to figure out how to juxtapose some things because this is the thing. I've been let loose in this thing and I want to tell flash stories and fun stories where Flash is on adventures, but also such a critical element to Wally is his kids and Linda. And like, I want to explore that and have fun with that. Like a lot of fun with that. And I think Ira and Jay are um, characters that could, you know, I would love to do something where that you could spin them off and do something, honestly. Um, precocious, you know, eight year olds that, that, uh, have powers is is great um so and then i'm and then i'm hinting at something much larger on the horizon and, okay. and we'll see if dc allows me to do anything well i i, I hope they do because i mean your enthusiasm and and the for based on the first issue i just i really would like to see you get to tell your vision yeah from beginning yeah. to end you know uh, i do want to know flash family yeah it's large and it gets larger it seems, yeah. every run every time there's a run really? um are there any characters that you um i don't know if this is really spoilery but is there any characters that you would like to have in the book and are they allowing you to have the characters in the book or, or are uh, you, being you know for, for now honestly for now because i i do think the flash family is very large i wouldn't mind bringing people in every once in a while but for me to get my sea legs under me, I really want to concentrate on Wally. I want to concentrate like on moments with his kids and his wife. Okay. And I don't, I don't necessarily want to muddle it uh, with some other characters right now. That mm -hmm. being said, the unfortunate side effect of somebody like you saying that to me causes a piece of my brain to start swirling. And that is a problem. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> By the end of the call, I'll be like, okay, so then we're going to have, you know, da, da, da. so I, I, I hesitate to say because also other characters are being, you know, kept by other people for uh, different other, uh, other things. But I would love to bring them in. I just want to make sure that I've got w Wally where I want him to be before I start you know, just grabbing people in for, for no particular reason. Okay. Um, it's fair. But, and part of it is just because I have, I have an idea of what's supposed to happen with Wally for a while. Mm -hmm. And I want to see that out and it's going to be fun and it's going to be uh, banana pants and it's going to be like, you want to do what, you know, and that's kind of what my editor says half the time. It's like, what? No, that doesn't make sense. I'm like, no, it will. Just, just let me do it. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. no, that's not how it works. I'm like, no, it should be how it works. Let me do it. <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, I think it'd be fun. I, I, I hope. I, I mean, gosh, it, it would be so great if they said, hey, you can do Flash like by like bi monthly. Like, I would love to do it twice a month, honestly, uh, mm. because I just want to get more of it out. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I love. I love Flash, and I and I miss that it. it's not going to be. I, I think it was twice a month throughout Williamson's run. I don't think it ever switched to monthly, if I remember correctly. Um, oh. But the reason I asked too is because, like, obviously, like I mentioned, Williamson didn't get to use Wally as much, and it's not like right. they were really doing much with Wally elsewhere. I, I think I can well, kind tell of me get who are some of your favorite people that you you would want to see. Um, well, I kind of have a feeling Jay Garrick is they're going to do something with JSA. I think that that's pretty yeah. ex self explanatory based on what. I mean, anybody that pays attention can kind of guess that they're going to do yeah. something with JSA. I don't see sure. how they don't. Sure. Um, but Max Mercury was a character yeah. that I really hated, was gone for a long time. Yeah. Um, and like I said, Bart Allen, I think yeah. that he was another character that we really watched grow and change from from how he was at Impulse. Then he right. was even Flash for a brief moment. He was right. Kid Flash. So I really just hope that even if you don't do something with them, and I hope I hope somebody does something with them because yeah. they're great characters, and that's one of the things that I love about DC that you don't necessarily get with Marvel is the legacy. Sure, right? You don't. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of Spider-Man characters, right? Right. Um, but it's not like they take over the mantle. So sure. That's that's more where I was coming from in hopes of uh, being able to see some of those characters. Yeah. Um, 
you know? And are you creating some new ones? Um, uh, <laughs> new speedsters or just new characters? No, just new characters. It doesn't have to be speedsters. I am so desperate. I've got a couple ideas. Okay, cool. <laughs> I wish I could tell you. Because I, you know, like I said, I, I, I think I, so Gold Beetle obviously is one of my favorites and being able to create her, co-create her, because the, the, the design and how beautiful it was. Um, I think she has some really weird friends, uh, really cool friends. And I would love to explore that, but I gotta get, I gotta get sign offs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for them to let me you know create a some wacky i'm hoping later on down the line i'll be able to introduce some of that stuff um okay. uh again it's like um uh i just want to because there's all i mean like even tim has bolt in teen titans academy and um there's some of those characters and wallace is over there too and uh there are those characters that i i don't know i don't know how much i'm allowed to use or not use and and explore and because other people have stuff they're doing with them you know and i don't want to step on any toes so uh uh for now i there's a bunch of i mean listen i would again if i get to add toys to the toy box that's like the greatest thing in the world yeah. that, do something that somebody else potentially will use later down the line that's even more fun so i'm i'm hope i'm hopeful that they'll let okay. me do that you know all right, cool. And then and with, um, and with Jay Garrick, I mean, the cool thing about Jay is like, you're right. Like I, I co-wrote a, a JSA movie that's coming out next or uh, yeah, next month, April 27th uh, with my uh, friend, Megan Fitzmartin. And, um, and we've got some Jay in there and we've got some Barry in there and uh, it's, it's going to be a firecracker of a, of a movie. So I hope people watch it too. I mean, I'm, I'm buying it. I'm, cool. I, what, what do you see Jay Garrick in animation? Like, right. You know, Right. What do you see the JSA? Never. So yeah. I am very, very, very stoked. I mean, yeah. I'm shocked that it was announced, to be honest, if I'm being completely honest <laughs> with you. I didn't even think that that's something I would see. So I definitely will be uh, getting that when it comes out. Uh, oh, cool, but, cool, cool. Yeah. But, you know, we, we've spent the majority of this talking yeah. about Flash, right. but I do want to ask um, before we, you know, get out of here, is there any other projects that you have in the works, um, whether it's more comics, animation that you can kind of talk about or um yeah i can talk i mean i have a lot of animation stuff um that i have stuff coming out this year i have some crazy stuff coming out next year um and i have a huge announcement hopefully sometime in uh soon uh there is a show that um i've been working on called monkey kid i can't wait for people to see that batman soul the dragon i did with bruce tim and uh, Sam Liu that was out in January and that's still out. And it's, it's one of my favorite things I've ever worked on. Um, but yeah, the JSA, it's coming out this next month. And, you know, I just hope people keep buying these uh, comic books. Okay. And, and, any more comics? No. No more plans for any more comics? Just I would, love, I would love to do more comics. Okay. I, All right. I, just... You know, I, I'm trying to figure out what they're going to, you know, I, I think, I think they're, I think they're just kind of like, I think DC's trying to plan their next move a little bit, you know? So Yeah, they're really slow rolling their line, which I appreciate. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that, well, there's a lot of Batman, but there's always going to be a lot of fucking Batman comics. Yeah. But I, I mean, listen, there's so many books that I would love to do, and, and it's just about finding out what they'll let me do. Because I would love to do another book. I would love to do another book. I feel like you'd like to do a, a blue and gold book. I will, I'm uh, sure. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure that this is going to be the year of blue and gold and unfortunately i don't think i have the clout to to do it i would love to do it i mean are you ted cord for me man and and booster so jeff johns and oh what was his name they did a booster jeff what, cats yes cats um uh they had done that booster series oh that, that was, was so phenomenal good. and then so dan jurgens took it over and it was yes. so good it was so, so good. good and that whole like you know the you know the the best hero you've never heard about type thing was so yep. great and obviously the jli for me was you know it shaped my brain so oh, I, lo yeah. I love that series and i always it's, yeah i've too. read it multiple times it's, yeah. it's one of the best uh, justice league books i think of all time it is i agree um all right well i'm very excited to see everything you got right. coming up animation <laughs> flash now that i got your email i might 
I might <laughs> bother you. I might send you like every time I see something that's crazy. I think I sent something to to Joshua Williamson. He had told me when I talked to him a few weeks ago. He's like, "Oh, you're gonna be, you're gonna want to email me in three weeks. You're gonna see something." <laughs> and he was right. He had the cliffhanger in that second part of his Robin story that just. Uh, uh, I mean, so I, good. Was, I jumped. I was like, "Yes!" I was. Like, oh, I couldn't fucking awesome. believe that it happened. So. Uh, like I said, very excited for everything you got coming up. Thanks. I feel like Wall- Wally's in good hands with you, good. and can't wait to see um, all your ideas come to fruition. Oh, thanks, um, Ryan. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, before we get out of here, um, if you could really quickly just uh, you know give us all where we can find you online, and I yep. will drop those links down below as well. Yeah, uh, you can find me on uh, Space Kicker at Twitter, or Twitter dot com slash Space Kicker, and. In my bio, you'll see a link to anything else, whether it's uh, Instagram or, you know, not that you want to see pictures of me and my family, but, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, my IMDb and stuff like that. So, yeah, Twitter is generally where I hang out. All right, cool, man. Well, I'll drop those links down below. And again, Thanks. thank you so much for uh, taking time out to chat with me. Oh, I sure. would really love to be able to do this maybe again after the first arc if you're up for it. That'd be great. Yeah, let me know. All right, cool, man. All right. Thanks, well, thank Ryan. you. And yeah, have a good rest of your day. You too. Bye.